Now, all the scripture that I'm going to read today will also be on the TV, but if you want to flip open, of course, we'd always rather see it in our Bibles. And uh, so if you have them and want to open there, you can. If not, they'll all be behind us. But uh, I want this message to be an encouraging, encouragement to you and a blessing. And uh, so with that, we'll go ahead and pray for this uh, time. Father, once again, we are thankful for our time and uh, pray this message uh, is a blessing, is an encouragement. Lord, we know it will never be fitting for what this season stands for, or, uh, for even even for being in your presence. And Lord, we're, we just uh, pray that you bless, and because uh, we need your help this morning. So Jesus, and we pray. Amen. All right, let's take our Bibles and turn to John chapter 1, if you would, please. And uh, just an amazing portion of Scripture here. Uh, John chapter 1 does a lot of callback to Genesis chapter 1. It says here, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Just, we all, you know, you can see that there, you see the capital W, that Word is talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was there at the beginning, not from the beginning, at the beginning, so He was always there. Uh, he is our, and we find out in Colossians that He is our Creator. Uh, we find, I mean, He's above all things, and uh, so just some amazing scripture. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Hearkening yet then back to let there be light. As the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it, comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now this isn't the John, the writer of the book. This is talking about John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light that all men through him might believe. And of course, whole heaps of amazing things uh, when we talk about John the Baptist, Malachi says that that, that Al, Elijah must come before that great and terrible day of the Lord. Jesus said that John was Elijah. Then El John said, hey, I'm not Elijah. You know, so, oh, that's contradiction. No, it's because understanding that the Jews rejected the kingdom. So therefore, now John the Baptist will come again, but not until the seven years of Jacob's trouble. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. So sorry, John not being that light, talking about witnessing Jesus Christ. That was the true light, which lights every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. Now look here in verse 14. This is so important. So it's so deep here. And the word was made flesh. And this is what we call the incarnation. This is Jesus taking on flesh. And this is God appearing to us in flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we be able his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Come back with me, if you will. About 2,000 years ago, a small town just south of Jerusalem. Of course, we're speaking of Bethlehem. You know, people make that pilgrimage every year. Um, I don't think I would do it anytime uh, in the next couple. You know, maybe wait until it calms down a little bit. But what, I think it'd be nice to see. However, if I were to ever go with those, you know, I'm kind of skeptical of some things. You know, every time they say, well, this was where this happened. But yeah, yeah, that was 2,000 years ago. A lot of things. You know, do you really think Jesus was in the upper room of a Roman style? Uh, you know, it could have been. It was during a Roman period, but it was built already in the upper. Could have been, but that's just been my thought process the whole time. But then you get to Golgotha, you get to the place of the skull, you can see the mountain where it looks like it. Yeah. <laughs> you can see it. But what a city Bethlehem was. Of course, now we're transitioning back there. It's a city where Rachel died. Remember J uh, Jacob's favorite wife? And, uh, of course, we say that with a chuckle. It's where Naomi lived before um, her family moving to Moab and meeting uh, meeting Ruth down there and then losing. Matter of fact, what's interesting is Bethlehem means the house of bread. She left the house of bread during a famine and went somewhere else and ended up being horrible for her. But it was the city where David grew up. So... It's the city where David grew up, so that's why in Luke chapter 2, where, why Joseph is going back to, to be taxed at the place where his family is from, and that would be Bethlehem. They, I know you know this, but they knew that Joseph should have been king. 
They knew that Jesus Christ was of the bloodline of David. That people knew this. And it's interesting that they still ignored it. Bethlehem was foretold in Micah 5 2. Says, but, but thou, Bethlehem of Freda, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet of thee shall uh, he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old, from everlasting. See, we see a little baby boy in a manger, but this is no ordinary boy. He was and is the Son of God, God appearing in the flesh. See, the word incarnation, I'll go ahead and pull it up for you. I mentioned it earlier, is the act of clothing with flesh, the act of assuming flesh or of taking a human body and the nature of man as the incarnation of the Son of God. See, God appeared to us in the flesh. Jesus Christ was 100% God, was 100% man, was just as, as much God as if he weren't man, just as much man as if he weren't, wasn't God, but yet with no sinless name, no sin nature. So he was born the perfect son of God, lived sinless for 33 years. As we've studied before, this isn't the first time we've seen Jesus in the Bible, though. All throughout the Old Testament, there are Old Testament appearances of Jesus, of Jesus Christ, and we call those theophanies, or you can call them Christophanies, whatever you want. Uh, it, it, you know, we, you know, it's like the angel that appeared uh, uh, to Joshua. I believe that was Jesus Christ. When we see the uh, the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day in the garden, that's Jesus Christ. Uh, but however, he hasn't yet taken on flesh. That doesn't happen until Bethlehem. But now God has appeared in the flesh. And that's what we are celebrating. You know, it, it's interesting. And we have a Christmas tree in our in church. And, you know, that might offend some people, I guess. But, uh, you know, we don't, we, we don't worship the tree, right? We worship the stuff underneath it. And, uh, you know, we're going to hopefully get some cool stuff this year. <laughs> but we'll talk to you about this today. The answer is in the manger. See, the answer is not in any self-help book. The answer is not in any religion or ritual. The answer is not coming and not in coming to church. The answer is a person. Can you imagine in that manger the very hands that uh, Mary holds? Uh, and the very cheeks that she caresses will be pierced. The brow that Mary strokes will be pierced by a mocking crown of thorns just 33 years later. The side that Mary pats will be pierced and out will come with both blood and water. I belong to a church. It's not the answer. I have been baptized. Not the answer. I'm Catholic. Not the answer. I'm Baptist. Not the answer. I'm a good person. Well, first off, not really. And um, <laughs> just had to throw that out there. And uh, <laughs> and that applies to me too, by the way. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. That's still not the answer. You can never be good enough to go to heaven. I go to confession. You have to confess a long time. Because you can't confess away a sin nature. That's not the answer. The answer is not in a church. And it's certainly not in this church. Because if you're looking for a perfect one, man, you missed it. And uh, but it's not in a dogma or a ritual. It is in a person. I want to clear a couple things to help you out, or help you out. You know, there's a building on the other side uh, uh, in Eugene that has the phrase on it. It says "Peace on Earth." I think it still says that. Do they still put that up there? I haven't. You know, it's funny is now that I've moved a little further uh, east, I don't see Eugene as often. And uh, remember, I used to you know go through there work uh, you know for group on all sorts of stuff, but uh, I haven't been there in a while. But I want to clear it. Luke chapter 2 says this, and we'll, we'll pull it up here for you. Glory to God in the highest. Now, notice it says here, on earth peace. It doesn't say peace on earth. On earth peace. Because if Jesus, if his point was to bring peace to us, he failed. Did Jesus fail? No. Okay. So what that's saying is that's talking about Jesus come to earth. On earth peace, goodwill toward men, not between men. You ever notice that? So we look around and see all this bad stuff happening. Well, well, if there's a loving God, why would that be happening? That wasn't the point of Jesus coming. Look at last week's sermon, talk about how rough life is. And I hope that really didn't, you didn't think about that too much this, this week, but you know, it, 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 it's, it's a truth. But then if you just go forward just a couple chapters, Luke chapter 12, Jesus said this, suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. See that there? I tell you nay, but rather division. Tr truth brings division. 
The minute I come up here and say something that's true, that's truth, there's going to be somebody that disagrees with me. Always. And which, by the way, I could be wrong in that truth, but if I, let's just assume that I'm saying the right truth. Even then, somebody's going to disagree. Truth divides. See, Jesus was not born that there would be peace between nations or peace between men. He was brought that there might be peace towards men and from God to us. He made the bridge for us to get back to him. So it's toward men, not between men. The answer is in the manger. Justice was satisfied. Now, thank God there's a way to go to heaven. Thank God there's a way that we can know for sure we're going to heaven. See, Jesus is the image of God. As he was in the manger was the image of God. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 covers this. It says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image. Remember on that song? Did we sing that today? Stamp thine image in its place. Second Adam from above. There is so much doctrine in these, in these Christmas hymns. It's talking about stamping his image that we may be more, may be more like Christ. But it says there, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And then we go back to our text first, John chapter 1, verse 14. And uh, we'll just have a couple more things we'll cover here, and then we'll, we'll finish the message. It sees the finishing the message that takes all the time, right? It's the 65 sub points, it's the exegesis, intro Jesus, and all sorts of neat stuff. Uh, but John chapter 1 and verse 14, we'll read it again. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among, the, among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. What is Christmas? <laughs> I think uh, somebody said that back in 1980, right? What is Christmas, right? Is it gifts? All of us know that's not the case. Cindy Lou Who taught us it's just about being together at Christmas, right? But Christmas isn't about the gifts. It isn't about the tree. But, you know, we all use that to part to celebrate the season. The season that, which, by the way, I have, uh, you can go over YouTube and find it, I do teach a lesson. You know, well, we think Jesus might have been born in March. You know, it, Christmas is a pagan holiday. Well, it doesn't now. And if you want, I mean, we'll go ahead and steal Halloween from you next. But however, I do believe scripturally you can prove that Jesus was born in late December, early January. It just takes study. Go back to the course of Abiah. Go to Zechariah, John the Baptist. Dad, you can add this all together. You come out with late December, early January. But people, what they do is they, well, Shepherds only abide in the field when sheep are giving birth, and that only happens in March. Well, could the shepherds have been abiding in the field? Because, remember, everybody was coming there to get taxed. There's no room in the inn. Maybe they were sleeping outside so they could rent their houses to somebody else. Maybe they collectively made a bad decision, and all their wives are mad at them, and they booted them out. Maybe the, some Christmas special is playing on everybody's TV, and they're like, you know what? I can't watch this again. And they go out and sleep with the sheep. You don't know why they were sleeping in the field. It doesn't say that the sheep were giving birth, therefore that's where they were. No, don't, don't get distracted by all that stuff. Thank you, Becca, for laughing at that. Tough crowd this morning. I tell the jokes, you laugh. That's, that's the order of the business here. Christmas is God becoming flesh so that we can understand him and dwelling amongst us that we might be saved. So I want you to follow me now. I want you to think with me for a moment. So Romans chapter 1 verse 4 says this. And declared. I have that word in blue up there so you'll see it. That word declared is interesting. So and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. That word declared. Now you know I don't appeal to the Greek very often because you know what? We have the English. We don't need the Greek. However, let's go ahead and look at it. So the word declared here is the Greek word horizo, which is where we get horizon, to mark out or bound. I don't know if anybody noticed throughout me in today. It seems like a little dark out today. Even for cloud cover, I'm like, you know, it's just kind of weird. And, uh, you know, the car screen kept on flashing dark and bright, you know, because it's, you know, it's right in between where it should be on light. But, you know, when we look out here, we, see, we can't see over the horizon. We can't see over and past. When we look at different directions, we are limited by how far we can see. The Bible talks about Jesus declared to be the Son of God. So what happened was Jesus 
horizon to be the son of God. He showed himself. God showed himself, was born of a man, born in a manger, born of a virgin back in Bethlehem of Judea and ended up, or I'm sorry, ended up and declared horizon to be the son of God. So from that, I have six quick truths that we're going to build on. Number one, I cannot see God. If you just turn that up, you've lost your privileges and I'm going to start blocking it. I'm wearing a sweater and I'm hot. <laughs> Yeah, no, everybody else is like... Number one, I cannot see God. Now, we're not talking about I can't see God's glory. We can't see evidence of creation. We see all that. But I can't look up and see God. Number two, the horizon is as far as I can see. So then number three, I cannot see far enough to see God because he is beyond my horizon. Matter of fact, he's not even in our three dimensions. We've covered that many times. Number four, the incarnation is God coming to the horizon so that we can see him. Let me illustrate that in a moment if you don't mind. Number five, if we can begin to grasp that, I can then begin to grasp everything in the Bible. This is part of understanding all of scripture. Well, the God of the Old Testament is different than the God of the New. Nope, that's still Jesus Christ in the Old Testament, still Jesus Christ in the New Testament. It's just that we understand him differently in person. See, number six then, I don't have to see God if I can see the one who can see God. So imagine, you know, just somebody's on top of the horizon can look over the horizon and say, well, I see what's here and tell me about it. See, John chapter 14, verse 9, he, Jesus talked about this. Jesus said then, now he's talking to Philip, have I been so long with you and yet thou hast, yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Even Jesus is like, this should be enough. You see me, you see the Father. So I want to illustrate this real quick in a simple way for our auditorium, and I want to cool it down a little bit. Do me a favor, Joe, I want you to open that door and leave it open so I can cool off the place. Do you mind? I'll win that temperature battle. I'm so bad. <laughs> well, we need to come back because we need to play, play at the end. <laughs> so here's Joe. You go ahead and shut the door a little bit so the door doesn't, you know, so that Angela isn't back there throwing a fit. You really didn't do that, did you? I turned it down. Well, you want to keep it somewhere. So here we have Joe. Joe is going to represent Jesus for us. So, Joe, as you step outside, you can see outside, right? You can see everything that's going on there. I can't see anything. I can't see what's going on outside. Except for, you know, I can play, I can kind of see uh, the Prius out there. Uh, you know, nice little car, Joe. And uh, notice I didn't see any bill stickers on it. What's up with that? Oh, it's not really my car. <laughs> <laughs> that it is, but it's, uh, I'm not the one that drives it. Most. Indeed. So I can't see what's going on there, but Joe can. And so now Joe has shown himself over here. Now, in an act of mercy towards you, because I don't want it to get too cold in here, you get the illustration. So I'm not going to leave Joe outside. You can go ahead and shut the door. But I want Joe to imagine him as if he was outside peeking in on us. Can you do that? Can we play together on that? So Joe, beyond our horizon. I have never walked the streets of gold, but I know someone who has. So, Joe, what do you see? No, actually, he's Jesus now. We can't call him Joe. So, Jesus, what do you see over there? Well, the gates of pearl. Oh, I see the gates of pearl. He tells me about it. And he tells me about those things. Now, I still have questions about the gates of pearl. Does that mean it's like one big round pearl like you find and it rolls? What, what is that all about? Is it something flat made of pearl? That, that just doesn't make sense, right? And uh, they're never closed. They, they're always open. But he told me there's gates of pearl. I still have a bunch of questions, right? Okay. What else do you see? I see the loved ones who have died. Ah, yes. Abraham, Moses, Elijah. Because he's not the God of the dead. He is the God of the living. He, well, who else do you see? I see the saint of all angels. Yes. You see those loved ones that passed ahead of us, passed before us. Hebrews even talks about this. It talks about that great cloud of witnesses that there are witnesses and that they witness us in life. If you wonder if somebody's gone before us, can they witness? Can they see what's going on? And the answer to that question is yes. 
What else do you see? I see the reason you have heartache. But I don't understand. I don't understand why I have heartache. I don't understand why what's going on to me right now isn't 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 going. I don't understand what why is there a roadblock? Why is there this log jam? Why is this heartache going on in my life? I don't know. But he does. What else do you see, Joe? Jesus. I see the reason. I see the reason you are here. Yeah. You know, we believe, well, we believe in free will, but at the same time, you know, Jesus works all things out for the good of us, those who love God. Do you think my mom saw in the late 70s why her husband left her and her young son? I still remember that day like it was yesterday. I was standing at the door, watched my dad leave, turn around, and I saw my mom just over the table, just saw me. You know, not something in the moment that you say, you know, this is great. Yeah, you know, this is great, right? And somebody came along and said, hey, you know what? God works all things out together for good. Slap me on the back, slap my mom on the back. There'd be some anger there, right? Remember, we don't have to say things when things are going wrong, right? You just put your arm around somebody and say, hey, I'm here for you. But what's interesting is God saw a son who would grow up and fight for marriage, fight for families, fight for children. And there are marriages who are, that are saved because of that one event. And then if I look at it, I believe my marriage is better because of it. If I could talk about, you know, I know what it was like to grow up without a dad. I know how that messes with you. It messes with a young boy. messes with a young girl's mind too, but it messes with a young boy's mind. I was uh, recently, Joe, you can go ahead and sit down. I have just two more questions for you. You can sit for me. You don't have to stand over there. <clears throat> As uh, many of you know, uh, my oldest brother, Died in 80, July of 82, right out of the right out of the military, right out of the Navy. I was a young kid at the time. I was just going into third grade. But his girlfriend was pregnant with a girl that ended up being born. And you know, this is my niece, she lives in Roseburg. And uh, but I think we sat down together in my sister's house over a Christmas party. And this has now been 82, is that 40 years? 41 years ago. And we were able to look at each other, both of us Christians, she's a saved lady and goes to church, and say, you know, it takes time. It takes time. But we start to see that God can work horrific, horrific events into good. To which she was able to look back at me and say, yeah. It's interesting how that works. At the moment, Matter of fact, I remember somebody who said to my mom, if your son had just turned his life to the Lord, maybe this wouldn't have happened. And then you wonder why my mom hated God for so long. I still remember that. Of course, then she was able to come to our church. She ended up getting saved in this very church, baptized at the river, and uh, is with the Lord now. But can you imagine? What else can you see, Jesus? I see why you have burdens. You know, I can't tell you why you have to go through the holidays by yourself. Can't, I, I can't give you that. I, I, I can't tell you why, for some people, this is the most painful time of the year. For this time of year, there's more, there are more heart attacks during around this time than any other. Of course, you have to spend time with your in-laws, so uh, that doesn't help. Someone will come to me for answers. But yet I won't be able to tell them a good answer. It's one of the toughest parts of the job. I don't have the answers, but I know somebody who does. He's given us some of those answers in Scripture. He's been a horizon to be the Son of God. Jesus, do you know why we have suffered heartache? Do you know why people are born blind? Do you know why people are crippled? He does. And that's all I need. The first face that a, that a child will see is the face of Jesus Christ. Imagine that. The first walking and jumping that some child might do might be in heaven. But what we forget is life is but a vapor. It's just there and it's just over. And the older we get, it just seems like the quicker it goes, right? I don't understand, but I don't have to. The one who does understand was born in a manger, born in Bethlehem and placed in a manger 2,000 years ago. All I have to do is trust. 
But here's something that we learned. Some people don't want the problem fixed because they would lose every reason to grow. Right? You know, but we, well, that's how we want to look at life. We want to look at the negative, focus on the negative. And we focus on the negative, we become negative. But yet, if there comes a point where we can start thinking, well, Jesus understands, and, and we're not trying to push this off on other people. You know, somebody's going through heartache, and you put your arm around and say, hey, Jesus has a plan for all of this. He's going to make it okay. Not good time. Don't do it. <laughs> Especially if somebody's not saved. But just don't do it. Just put your arm hand here for me. See, all we can do, all we can do, all we have to do is trust. If you cannot fully understand the, uh, fully, you can. If you cannot understand the incarnation, you can never understand the one. Jesus took on flesh. But if I can believe that God is on the horizon, I can believe what is beyond the horizon. Jesus appeared in the flesh so that we can know what is on the other side. He told me there is a God. He told me there is a hell. He told me that I can go to heaven when I die if I want to. There's more to Christmas than gifts, family, and time off. Of course, we'll enjoy all of those. Christmas is about Jesus leaving glory, being born in a manger for you. And I've said this many times, I'll say it again. Jesus would have done everything he did. Born in a, born in a, in a <laughs> born outside, placed in a manger, lived a poor life, was unjustly convicted, crucified, beat, whipped, whipped. He would have done all of that if it was only you that he had to do it for. The Bible says he's not willing that any should perish. And then we have people on this planet look at God and say, no, that's not loving God. Well, no, it's a rough life, but we have a loving God. <clears throat> Chris, Jesus left glory to come to earth for you. Imagine the eternal consequences for Jesus Christ for that. You see people mocking. But however, being in the flesh, now Jesus has taken on something different that's going to, that, that he is different for eternity future. Now, it's not the flesh like, like this, right? It is flesh. But you remember, Jesus can pass through walls, and the Bible says when we get to heaven, we'll be like him. We're not going to be bound by time there, nor is he. So, Joe, most important, what's, what, what else do you see? Let's see how it does. See, Jesus came. Main reason is to redeem mankind. So that you and I have a, have a way for heaven. We have no hope for heaven outside of Jesus Christ. You know, I'm one of the pastors of the church. It doesn't help me get to heaven. How many times we knock on the door and say, oh yeah, my uncle was a pastor. My dad was a blah, blah, blah. It doesn't help. It doesn't help me, so I wouldn't help anybody that I know. I can't do enough good. I can't do enough. I can't get baptized enough. I can't give enough in the offering plate. I can't go to church enough. I can't study enough. I can't be good enough to go to heaven. There is no hope for me. No hope for you either, other than the fact Jesus died in our place. If there was any other way to go to heaven, he would have told us about it. And if there's any other way to go to heaven, gee, God wouldn't have sent his son to die in our place. Some of you have kids. You wouldn't let your, let your child be hurt for anybody else. You wouldn't let your, if your son or daughter had to die in order for somebody else to go to heaven, you'd probably look at them and say, well, sorry, bud, you're not going, right? Because that's what parents do. But God loved us enough to send his son to die on the cross, be manifest, show up, horizon in the flesh, so that you and I can know for sure we're going to heaven. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. I have a question for you just real quick. This